Today's true crime story is brought to you by ExpressVPN. So I've been using ExpressVPN even before they reached out, and basically it encrypts your data, making sure your information stays protected, it prevents you from DDoS attacks so rival players won't be able to find your IP address and dig up personal information like where you live. It also makes browsing completely anonymous. One of my favorite things about ExpressVPN is that I can connect to a server in another country and now I can watch your name or other movies that aren't available in the Netflix US. Seriously, have you seen Netflix Japan? Why don't we have any of these shows? It costs less than $7 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee and it just takes one click to connect. So take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get 3 months free by clicking the link in the description box expressvpn.com slash D. Take back your privacy with ExpressVPN. When Gypsy Rose was just a child, she had many different illnesses, ranging from muscular dystrophy, leukemia, seizures, vision slash hearing loss, and the list goes on. Thankfully, her mother Dee Dee was always there for her. The mother and daughter were beloved by their community. Even Habitat for Humanity built a house for them to aid with Gypsy's needs. For years, she would be on treatment, undergo surgeries, and be on medication, even sleeping with a breathing machine to help with her sleep apnea. But something strange was going on that nobody was aware of. You see, Gypsy Rose was always in a wheelchair despite being able to walk. And ever since she was a kid, she was fed through a tube, but never actually needed one. The person with the illness was never Gypsy Rose. It was her mother, Dee Dee, who made up all these disorders and lied to her own daughter her entire life. It started when she was an infant spending time in a neonatal intensive care unit. At 8 years old, she fell off her grandfather's motorcycle and injured her knee. Although it was nothing serious, Dee Dee forced her to stay in a wheelchair so it wouldn't get worse. It wasn't until they moved to Missouri that neurologist Dr. Flasterstein realized that she doesn't have muscular dystrophy, and he suspected Gypsy Rose was the victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Her mother was making up everything and put her own daughter through so much pain when she was actually healthy. Her teeth were rotting from the anti-seizure medication, and when he confronted her about past medical records, Dee Dee said all the documents were destroyed alongside their old home during Hurricane Katrina. Feeling attacked, Dee Dee made a mental note not to see Dr. Flasterstein anymore, and unfortunately, the neurologist didn't pursue this case further. Fast forward a couple years, Gypsy Rose, now 19, had been suspecting for a while that she never had any diseases and needed someone to save her. She would sneak out and ask the neighbor for help to bring her to the hospital, but Dee Dee would always intercept and convince them that her daughter had brain damage and didn't know what she was talking about. Without hesitation, people believed the mother, and Gypsy Rose found it impossible for anyone to listen. It got worse when one day she escaped to meet a guy at a sci-fi convention she had been chatting with online, and Dee Dee caught them together in a hotel room. Enraged, she smashed her computer, threatening her daughter that she will use the hammer on her fingers if she ever tried to escape again. For the next two weeks, Gypsy Rose was chained to her bed. Her fear of Dee Dee was at its peak, and she became desperate. During the night when her mother fell asleep, Gypsy Rose would go online to a dating website, and that is when she met Nicholas Goldjohn. He was a 23-year-old with multiple personalities and had a criminal record for indecent exposure. Her relationship with Nicholas grew quickly, and for over a year, they would message each other secretly on Facebook. Soon after, Gypsy Rose told him about the possibility of killing her mother and asked if he would help. In her mind, this was the only way to be free. Nicholas agreed, and he clearly wanted a future with Gypsy Rose and was willing to carry out that plan. 
It was June 2015. Nicholas came from Wisconsin to her house that night. They met at the door, and Gypsy Rose handed him a knife, duct tape, and gloves. Still asleep, he crept up to her bed, and it happened. Dee Dee screamed her daughter's name that she was being stabbed in the back. Gypsy Rose hid in the bathroom and covered her ears until it was all over. Dee Dee Blanchard was dead. They took about $4,000 that her mother had stashed away, and the two left the house in the middle of the night, believing they got away with their crime. Friends of Dee Dee had become worried when her Facebook account posted this message shown on their news feeds. The police obtained a search warrant and found Dee Dee's body inside along with the wheelchairs, but Gypsy Rose was missing. A neighbor of theirs knew she had a secret Facebook account and the police were able to get Facebook to trace the IP address and found them in Wisconsin where they surrendered and was arrested. The media covered the Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose story and the truth about her faking her daughter's illnesses. And they also found out that Dee Dee had been collecting thousands of dollars from foundations and disability checks from the government all these years. The two went on trial, and the jury had decided their fate. Gypsy Rose Blanchard accepted a plea bargain and was sentenced to 10 years in jail. And Nicholas Goldjohn, who committed this act, was sentenced to life in prison. <laughs>